Thank you uh, very much, uh, Mr. Speaker. My question today is to the Premier. A year ago today, the Minister of Economic Development said, and I quote, I'd like to see us land a new manufacturing plant or two in the next five or ten years, unquote. He even went so far as to appoint an auto czar to make that happen. Yet the Minister of Environment has totally different plans. At the same time that he threatened the 50,000 jobs in the nuclear industry, he also took aim at the nearly one in six Ontario jobs that benefit from the auto industry. Speaker, the Minister of Environment described our Canadian manufacturers as, and I quote, lacking courageous leadership and doomed to have BMW and Tesla start eating our lunch, unquote. Mr. Speaker, for the second day in a row, which cabinet minister does the Premier side with? The minister who wants auto manufacturing or the minister who doesn't? Thank you. Minister of Finance. Minister of Finance. Mr. Speaker, we've been very clear all along that we are going to invest in our economy to create good-paying jobs, and we have. The plan's been working. Over 630,000 net new jobs since the recession. We have become the top destination in all of North America for foreign direct investment, feeding out California, Texas, New York, and every other province. And we do so because we are partnering with the auto sector, recognizing the transformations that they're making in manufacturing for value-added manufacturing, which, by the way, also is an improvement for our environment. They work hand in hand, Mr. Speaker. We're working closely together to improve our economy, improve our environment, and Mr. Speaker, we're winning at this point. Well, uh, again to the uh, Premier. Speaker, just last year the Premier appointed Ray Tangay, the auto czar, to help bring new auto investment to our province. In one day, the Environment Minister has reversed much of that hard work. It's another day, another uninformed comment from the Environment Minister. Speaker, we've already lost General Motors in Windsor, the Ford plant near St. Thomas, and the GM plant in Oshawa could be next. If the GM plant leaves, it alone will cost Ontario $5.7 billion in GDP and over 33,000 well-paying jobs in Ontario. Speaker, that's why I wrote to Ray Tangay to see if he agrees with the minister's comments. Speaker, who does the Premier think should produce the government's policies on the auto sector? The expert with over 30 years' experience or Glenn Murray? Minister's title or writing, please. Minister of Finance. Well, thank you, Mr. Speaker. And I appreciate the question because it gives us the opportunity to, once again, talk about the importance of the auto industry, the importance of, concert, of continuing to support a sector which, by the way, Mr. Speaker, the progressive Conservatives voted against the opportunity to save the auto industry when it was most in need. They stood on their hands and they did not support what was necessary. And as a result of our ongoing support, since 2003, our government has invested over $1 billion in leveraging an additional $12 billion from the private sector for the auto industry. Ontario owns four of the top five positions in the latest survey by J.D. Power Associates for the quality vehicles built in North America. And over the past two years, Ontario has seen nearly $4.5 billion in new auto investments. This is helping create and sustain over 21,000 jobs in that very sector, as well as a peripheral sector that services those, that industry as a speaker. Auto industry is critical to Ontario, and we are going to continue to Thank support you. it, and we're going to continue to support our environment.